It wasn't much of a surprise that the federal government would let itself boast about a balanced budget. The government says it will be in the black this year with a surplus of $1.4 billion. How it got there matters. It made $1 billion more than expected, selling off some assets. $2.2 billion came from the sale of its remaining General Motors shares and part of the latest wireless spectrum auction. The government also tapped into its contingency fund. That fund normally sits at $3 billion. Now it's left with $1 billion. It isn't expected to build back up to $3 billion until 2019. The budget confirmed a lot of plans that were already leaked. The TFSA limit will increase to $10,000 from $5,500. Rules around registered investment funds are being relaxed. It allows more than 50% more money held up to the age of 90. The universal child care benefit is being expanded. Parents get more for younger children and a new benefit is introduced for kids aged all the way up to 17. Taxes for small businesses will be cut from 11% currently to 9% by 2019. The capital cost allowance tax incentive will be extended for a full 10 years. For infrastructure, $1.75 billion will go towards public transit. Spending there doesn't start until 2017. Time for the big picture on the budget. Armin Yelnizan, senior economist with the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. Goldie Heider, president and CEO of Hill & Knowlton Strategies. And Bill Robson, president and CEO of the C.D. Howe Institute. And Bill, I'll start with you and just ask, you know, we've, he, we, we look at this and it's being characterized as uh, a, lo a lot of politics, uh, a lot of out-year promises, and maybe uh, a claim of a surplus that's pretty thin uh, in terms of the size of that surplus and how they got there. Uh, how would you characterize it? Well, you talked about the budget being small. I'll slip in one dig, which is in a small budget, it'd be nice if you didn't have to get to th page 372 before you found out what the revenue and spending total numbers <laughs> were. So uh, it could have been a bit slimmer uh, with some of the information up front. But as far as the overall shape of it goes, if you're comfortable with the fiscal direction this government's been going in uh, up till now, uh, then there will be a lot to like. Uh, certainly fiscal prudence is, is there, notwithstanding how skinny that surplus and the contingency looks. They've also been conservative on the economic projections. So there's some extra padding in there. Uh, they've benefited from lower interest payments with, with lower interest rates, uh, and that's a helpful thing as well. A lot of stuff sprinkled in. As you mentioned, a lot of it's been uh, telegraphed before. Uh, I like what they did with thrifts. I'm sorry it wasn't a little bit more expansive, but for seniors worried about uh, depleting their savings, I think that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you were happy with the way this budget was, the government was going before, you'll be happy with this. If you were unhappy, happy, uh, you're going to have some complaints and certainly some people who wanted to see their radical spending increases or more imaginative and expansive tax cuts, uh, they'll have to wait for another day. All right, Armin, let's find out, are you happy or unhappy with what you saw in this budget? Well, you know, they've made a big deal about what great economic managers they are. I just want to remind our viewers that we went into this recession with more uh, economic heft than any other recession since the Second World War and with a whopping big surplus and we're coming out of it five years into a recovery with the weakest economic performance of any of our recessions. So here's a government that's staring down slowing economic growth in Canada and around the world. The next two years are going to be very challenging for our economy and past that we're looking at population aging. This government offers instead of an economic action plan to deal with those challenges, an economic distraction plan. It doesn't deal with any of the big picture issues, and yet this budget is actually its CV, its uh, resume, for asking voters to vote them in for another four years of economic management and guiding our economy. And what we're seeing is just basically a focus on tax cuts, trade, and terrorism. It's an utter, uh, it's just, a, it's a, a laughing stock of a piece of guidance for the forward um, motion of our economy. Well, Goldie, uh, it, it may be that it's lacking kind of macro vision on how to kind of seed economic growth. But uh, if you're a senior, you probably like this budget. If you're a family with young kids, you probably like this budget. Um, I know that certain uh, swaths of uh, the business community are going to be happy about things like the tax cut. So is it successful on that front? If, if this is going to be a campaign kind of platform, is it a, is it a, a success? Well, look, if, the, if it's true this is a small budget, then the government's mantra may well be good things come in small packages because they do have a, a targeted approach uh, for, as you mentioned, families, uh, small businesses, seniors. So it's very targeted, and of course it becomes uh, a, an election budget. But, you know, it's as advertised. This is a government that ran on the things that it just announced. These are not surprises. It is exactly what they've been talking about. It's what they believe they have a mandate to do. Now the question is, is whether they can parlay that into an extended mandate. Six months from now, we will 
will be swearing in the new government of the day. And so you'll have to look back to this moment and say, how much did this budget give the government the political advantage in a short period in which it has now constructed the narrative under which the opposition has to look at the cost that they're going to put to their platform and explain to Canadians which tax cuts are you going to reverse, which policies are you going to change, and whether Canadians will buy into that strategy. All right, and I just want to note, we just had a banner up on the screen that said uh, the families will save 6600 this year. Bill, one of the complaints I would have uh, after spending the day in the lockup, and I've done it many times with different budgets over the, over the years, is how difficult uh, the governments make it to actually understand what they're presenting in terms of this year. That 6600 incidentally, includes the benefit of a reduction in the GST. So, yes, uh, they could take credit for it, but it's going back an awful long way. Uh, is there enough clarity here about exactly Exactly what's being spent, exactly what's coming in, and, and what the actual picture is. You tempt me to repeat the point I made earlier about how much material you have to get through before you get to the stuff that really matters. The necessary information is there. Uh, there is a lot of useful stuff in this budget, and uh, we talked a bit earlier about the credibility of some of the projections. Um, if you think that a government that manages spending tightly is a, is a good government, uh, there's a lot of detail in the budget that would, that would um, reinforce your, your belief that they're on top of some of the things that have gotten governments into trouble in the past. Uh, but when it comes to the amount of stuff that's being reannounced, uh, the adding up of things in, in various tables to demonstrate how they benefit such and such a, 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 a sector of the economy or, or a category of citizen, um, there is an awful lot there. I guess it's the way that budgets are put together these days. Uh, when you, when you, so that's the political loss on it. When you look at the big economic picture, just to make a, a point about sort of stepping back and, and thinking how people might look at this in five years' time, the political results will clearly color people's judgment. But when people look at the the economic management. I, I don't agree with Armin. I think people will say generally it was very good to have a government that kept us on this kind of a track uh, where we're staying out of fiscal trouble because there are a lot of other countries in the world that wish they weren't in fiscal trouble. Uh, they have looked ahead and looked at some of the things to do with retirement saving, including the cost of their own programs. They've laid some groundwork for dealing with that. Uh, on the whole, I've seen some pretty wacky budgets in my time, and uh, as I read through this one looking for unpleasant surprises, I wasn't seeing them. I came away thinking, yeah, this is pretty much the course they've been steering, and it's, it's not a bad one for the country. Well, I, I, mean, I mean, you yeah. want to get in on that? Yeah, I, I actually disagree very strongly. The idea that people are going to be happy with tax cuts, yeah, if you don't do anything else, give me back my money. But this is like $33 billion in tax cuts over the next five years on, on the business side as well as the personal income tax side. $33 billion to do something to strengthen our communities, to get ready for population aging, to actually improve health. You know, you give people money in their pocket, but what about the next generation that's having trouble climbing on board and getting a foothold in the labor market? Those are the people you're going to be relying on in 10 years and 15 years and there's no plan for them no ec no economic growth and no action plan for young people this is a budget for people that have got savings which is awesome but a lot of Canadians do not have savings it's also a budget for people that already have somebody staying at home or are willing to consider reducing their income to keep somebody staying at home at a time when we're we're confronting labor shortages that are going to get increasingly endemic across the economy in fact it's steering us in the, the actually opposite direction that we need. We need actually to spend and have more people working. All right, Goldie. I was just going to say, this may, not be the, this may not be the budget to do that with, right? We're six months away from an election. They're, they're playing to their brand of strong, competent, capable economic managers. The average person out there doesn't understand what backloaded means, doesn't understand how, you know, the contingency fund works and probably doesn't care. What they're interested in is, what are you doing with my money? And if there isn't a high demand for the things that Armin's been talking about, you know, clearly this government is resonating with the audiences it's seeking to target, particularly There's a families. There's jobs and growth. Well, There's a demand to fix crumbling right. infrastructure. That's you're happening talking across about the infrastructure country. Spending. The government spent $55 billion on that infrastructure spending during the time it needed to. It's paid off that, that, that uh, deficit. It's promised that it would. Right. So I think what they're saying is saying, compare us to the alternatives that you have. All right, on that note, we got to leave it there. That's the big picture. Armin Yanazan, Goldie Hyder, Bill Robson, thanks to you all.